It has been five years since the world was blessed by the Nintendo Switch. Well, five years and a few months, give or take. And for that short time, it managed to sell well over 100 million units so far. There's really no two ways about it, the Switch is kind of a monster and well on its way to be one of the most successful consoles ever made. In part thanks to its amazing library of games, RPGs, FPSs, kart racers, shmups, farming games, no matter which type of game you enjoy, this little device has got you covered. But of course, not all genres are equal, and some have received more love than others. So in this video, we will take a look at a genre that is in desperate need of more attention. Sudoku, baby. Of course not. It's visual novels. It's right there in the title of the video. Anyways, the goal of this video is to take a look at all the visual novel releases, see how the Switch is doing as a visual novel console, and answer whichever questions one might have in this regard. Is there a VN subgenre that is more popular than others? Are we getting enough releases to justify having the Switch as your main visual novel console? Are there any trends that we could use as a reference to predict future releases? Will people stop putting pineapple on pizza? And will Jordan write a script for himself instead of sponging off others? You cheeky bat. These sort of questions. Now I will be the first to admit when I saw this script I thought oh my god this introduction is massive. It's very very long but we do need to set out our methodology like how we came to our conclusions. So uh, I really hope you watch all the way through and if you don't I'm firing Mehring for writing this script. It is his, his fault so uh, yeah his future is in your hands. Watch all the way or he's, he's gone. Our methodology was to write down every single release and categorize it by genre, length, and in the case of Japanese VNs, whether it has a Western English translation or not. Now, I know what some of you are already thinking, don't we have VNDB for that? Well, kinda. For those of you in the dark, VNDB is an extremely useful website that serves as a massive visual novel database. It is really fantastic and plenty of people in the VN community use it on a pretty much daily basis. I mean, VN Paradise would not exist without me trying to plagiarize VNDB. That's how important it is. But for as convenient as it may be, some aspects of it are quite intimidating to properly navigate and depending on how you do it, might get some rather misleading results. For example, if you go to the visual novel section and simply try to filter all the visual novels by the ones that were released on the Switch and have an English translation, it will give you exactly that. All the visual novels on the Switch that had an English release regardless of the platform. So a VN like Higurashi, which does have a Switch release, but its actual English release is still exclusive to PC, will still appear on that list. We do know that there is a better way to filter them and get the exact results you want, but we thought that maybe with this video you might get a clearer perspective on the visual novel scene on the Switch as a whole. As far as how we decided to do it, we categorized them into six main categories. Plot gay or a plot centered VN. In this category, we included genres such as mystery, horror, fantasy, and so on. Gal gay. These are visual novels which primarily focus on romantic themes and whose main protagonist is male and the romantic candidates are female. In this category, we have decided to mix both drama and romantic comedies, so stuff like Clanad and Alcana go here. Otomi gay, similar to the previous category, but this time the protagonist is female and you want to bang the dudes. Yuri gay, as in girl on girl romance, everyone wins. BL, boy love romance. And finally, OELVN or EVN or ELVN, whatever you want to call them. In other words, visual novels that were developed in the West, not in Japan. We do need to slightly further clarify some of our standards just for the sake of full transparency because not everyone shares the same opinions as to what constitutes a VN or even what determines the VN genre. The world is divided by those who are right and those who think they're right. Bless them. So first of all, these following titles are games that VNDB does consider a visual novel but we decided to exclude them because we are correct. 
fighting games like Persona 4, Arena Ultimax, or Blaze Blue Central Fiction, don't be daft. Dungeon crawlers like Death End Request or Mary Skelter, you're frankly having a laugh. Fate X Stella, now you're not even trying. World's End Club? We know you're all desperate for more Zero Escape, but come on now. Prison Princess, whatever that is. There might be a couple more that we excluded, but these were the more better known titles. Next up, regarding what we consider to be a translated visual novel, we do not count games that received a fan translation patch, nor do we count games that were machine translated, even if said machine translated game had an eShop listing. And lastly, the explanation as to why we decided to categorize all Western visual novels as a single genre. There's mainly two reasons for this. First of all, Western visual novels often don't adhere to the same genre foundations as Japanese visual novels. The second reason is that there's a very clear divide between people in the VN community who engage with Western VNs and the ones that don't. So for the sake of preferences, we decided to draw a line right there in some sort of digital apartheid. We should also say there is the possibility that some of the data regarding release dates isn't 100% accurate and this data was collected on April 11th, 2022, so there's been some new releases since then. If you spot anything wrong, feel free to point it out in the comments or not, it's up to you, do what you want. But if you do see something wrong and you don't tell us, let that be a weight on your shoulder, not ours. You are misinforming the world, not us. But enough of all this boring stuff, let's get into the meat of things. Firstly, we'll be taking a look at each year of the Switch's lifespan so far, starting with, of course, where it all began in 2017. It's probably no exaggeration to say that the Switch had one of the strongest first years of any console ever made. Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Vroom in the Night Sky. Wow, I liked it. It was such a great year that to this day many consider it to be the best one so far. So, in this amazing year, how many visual novels did the Switch receive? Three. Yeah, you heard that right. Three visual novels were released in 2017 on the Switch, all of them being exclusive to Japan. Actually, that's not entirely true, as two of those were more like classic adventure games than pure VNs. So in reality, it was just one, that visual novel being none other than Raging Loop. At the time, it was still a Japanese-only release, but as we all know, that wouldn't last too long. Still, I think it's pretty amusing that so few were released. Of course, in that year, the Vita was still going strong as a VN machine, receiving such amazing titles as Chaos Child, Danganronpa V3, and Color X Malice, just to name a few. It is worth noting that during this year, Nintendo was heavily curating what went on the eShop or not. I mean, I can't imagine the CEO of Nintendo at that time getting a massive boner for VNs during the early years. Things would look slightly better in 2018, when we finally saw the first visual novel to be released in the West, an Otome game called The Men of Yoshiwara, published by D3 Publisher. We would also see our first gal gaze on the system with Nekopara, as well as the first physical visual novel to be released in the West, Death Mark. And to close the year, Nightshade, one of the Switch's better regarded Otomi gaze, would release in December, becoming the first import friendly physical VN that included English on its cartridge. In Japan, however, things were seriously picking up. Entergram, one of the most prolific visual novel console publishers, began releasing titles, and they started strong with games such as Higurashi and Daito Shokan no Hitsujikai. Majors would also step in and release Memories of Innocent File and Steins Gate Elite, which of course at that time was exclusive to Japan. The Otomige side wasn't slacking off either, with big hitters like Code Realize and Norn 9. All in all, there were a total of 69 <laughs> visual novels released in Japan and 29 released here in the West. Now, the following year, 2019, might have been one of the Switch's strongest years in terms of visual novel Western releases. Kind of. But firstly, Here's the bigger titles that we received. Planetarian, Clanad, The Grisaya Trilogy, Raging Loop, AI The Somnium Files, you know, Steins Gate Elite, 
Steins Gate Zero, World End Syndrome, Spirit Hunter NG, If My Heart Had Wings, Nurse Love, Addiction and Syndrome, and last but not least, the Ace Attorney Trilogy. And yes, I can already hear some of you typing away saying that they aren't visual novels. Well, I could tell you to smeg off. Now, from that list, you might have noticed something unusual, which is that none of them were Otomi games, because in reality, it was a slightly quieter year in that regard. You could almost hear the groans of certain ladies around the world just thirsting for more Otomi games. I felt for you, and it's incredible that you're still around to tell the tales. If you want to know where those Otomi games went, well, you need to look no further than what was happening in Japan, as they were getting quite a few of them. Luckily, a good chunk of them would eventually receive a Western release later on, some of those titles being Buster Fellows, Cafe Enchante, Pier Fiore Fate and Memories. Other notable Japanese-only releases were Summer Pockets, DC De Capo 4, and the Yurage series Flowers. In total, the Switch saw 105 visual novels released in Japan and 52 in the West. 2020 would open with the greatest visual novel ever made, My Tetsu Pure Station. Okay, I'm kind of joking here, but it really was the first VN that we saw in that year, which definitely not a bad way to start the year. In this year, we saw quite a few Western-developed visual novels receiving their own physical releases, those being Valhalla, Coffee Talk, and Arcade Spirits. We also finally saw Alcana getting a console release, which actually had a release in Japan a couple of years prior. Unlike the previous year, this was a pretty good one for Otomige fans, with big names such as Code Realize, Cafe Enchante, Pia Fiore, Fate and Memories, and Color X Malice finally receiving its Switch port. Other important visual novel releases were the Robotic Notes Elite, Double Pack, Little Busters, and Root Double Before Crime After Days with its super duper extended subtitle. Looking at the Japanese side, most of the higher rated titles would fortunately receive Western releases later on. Some of the ones worth mentioning that didn't were the all ages ports of Cross Channel, Love Our Kiss, and E School Life. So, as a whole, Japan received 127 visual novels, whereas we got 83. 2021 would be yet another incredibly strong year in the visual novel sphere. Probably the biggest release in the West was The House in Fata Morgana, which for a while was the highest rated game on Metacritic even above Breath of the Wild. Truth be told, it was due to the lower amount of reviews it got comparatively speaking, but still, it was a fairly amusing event. Nosia would also release in the West this year, and according to Mirin and his infinite, unbiased, and absolute wisdom, it was that year's uncontested game of the year. It was actually 13th on Switch Watch's list that year, but uh, don't mention that to Mirin because last time I did here, he sent me a turd in the mail. Unhinged. Other big names were the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, Island, Doki Doki Literature Club. Fatal 12, Buster Fellows, Olympia Soiree, Cupid Parasite, and the Danganronpa Trilogy. Really, the list goes on. What a fantastic year. Even Nintendo jumped into the visual novel bandwagon with their remakes of the Famicom Detective Club games and the Japanese-only Buddy Mission Bond. However, for as strong as this year was, when it came to Galgay games released in the West, it was a bit of a step down. Probably the best one released this year was Atri My Dear Moments, which for some reason is still exclusive to the Japanese eShop, even though it does include English. But, oh boy, in Japan, this year was nothing short of incredible. Umineko, Jack Jean, Memories of Historia, Kiniro, Loverish, Toki Jikake Trilogy, Summer Pockets Reflection, Blue, Air, Tokimeki Memorial Girls Side, Fourth Heart, Pathway Remake, and of course, the biggest and most anticipated visual novel ever released on the Switch, Tsukihime, A Piece of Blue Grass Moon. There was a must-play visual novel being released pretty much every single month, making this the strongest visual novel year the console had seen so far. Overall, there were around 185 visual novels released in Japan and 110 in the West. Which leads us to our current year, 2022. 
It has started off slightly quiet, but we have already seen some nice titles here and there. As far as Otomi Gay, Varial Barricade was released late February. Go check out our review, wink wink. And the release of Marco and the Galaxy Dragon and Loopers are not so far away either. Of course, the most anticipated releases have to be the sequel to AI Somnium Files, Nirvana Initiative, as well as the double pack of Chaos Head Noah and Chaos Child, plus a very recent announcement, Type Moon, developer of Fate Stay Night and Tsukihime, one of the most important VN companies, and yet none of their titles ever received an official translated release until now with Witch on the Holy Night. It's completely unprecedented, and one could say it's a clear sign that the genre is growing in the West. And don't forget, there is an absolute ton of Otomi Gays coming later this year as well in the West. However, in Japan, things have not slowed down. Those guys are feasting like kings. The year started with Light's brand new game, Matgatsu Barai, as well as other fantastic titles like Aonatsu Line, Tsuki no Kanata, The Aima Show, and Musicus. Probably the most anticipated title right now has to be Anonymous Code, the latest game in the science adventure series releasing this July. As for other highly acclaimed games, we also have Ayoku no Iustea, Mahotsukai no Yoru, and the 9-9 series releasing in the not so distant future. So when counting already released titles as well as announced upcoming titles, in 2022 we have 71 visual novels in Japan and 24 in the West, which seems like a relatively low number but do keep in mind that unlike other genres, VNs are often announced mere months before their release date, and sometimes they just pop up on the eShop unannounced. And just remember, we did stop counting a couple of weeks back. When looking at the numbers, it's certainly encouraging seeing that there hasn't been a single year whose release numbers have been lower than the previous. It might be slightly disheartening to compare the Japanese numbers with the Western numbers, but I would say that as of right now, visual novels are at a very healthy state, or at least they are as a whole, because when looking at them after doing a genre by genre categorization, things might look a little bit differently. Now it's time to do a battle of the genres. Sorry. <clears throat> Battle of the Genres! As previously stated, we have divided and categorized all the visual novel releases into six categories. Plot gay, Otomi gay, Gal gay, Yuri gay, Biel gay. Biel gay? Wasn't he the manager of Barcelona in the mid 90s? Biel gay. And Western visual novels because I, we're massive racists, I suppose. We are, however, going to focus primarily on those visual novels whose original language is Japanese, since one could say that that's where the higher regarded titles come from. Do keep in mind that there are some other Asian visual novels that won't be included in those Japanese categories, games like Food Girls, Buried Stars, or Will a Wonderful World. This isn't out of prejudice or disparagement, but simply rather being more precise. The main goal is to see which genre is more prevalent and which ones have a higher likelihood of being translated into English. We will also be taking a look at the relation between that and the overall length of the visual novels. That being said, we do not have accurate information of every single visual novel release, so take these numbers as an approximation rather than something concrete as you should always do with anything that comes out of my mouth. So starting with the plot-focused games, regardless if they're about horror, mystery or fantasy, there's around 132 of them released on the Switch, out of which 65 received an English translation, which roughly accounts for almost 50%. Within them, mystery is by far the most popular subgenre. Why? Well, <laughs> it's a mystery. <laughs> Probably the best takeaway from these numbers is that long format visual novels, as in visual novels that take more than 30 hours to complete, have a really high chance of being translated, with around 62% of them having a Western release. Medium length plot gay, also fairly often translated with a rate of 55%. Another important thing to note is that quite a few of them received their Western release at a later date than in Japan, that date ranging from months to, in some cases, years, which means that an already released Japanese-only plot-focused visual novel might still get a later Western release. You can keep your fingers crossed. But, of course, that is a case-by-case -case basis, publisher-by-publisher situation. 
with some of them being more likely than others. Yuri games, while not that many in numbers, are another genre with a decent JP to EN rate, sitting at exactly 50%. The only important releases that we're missing are basically the Flower series by Innocent Grey. BL, on the other hand, is a bit more dire. The only Japanese BL visual novel that has received an English release has been Hashihime of the Old Book Town. Although, to be fair, the Switch only has like six BLVNs. But still, come on, gay community. Let your voices be heard by the VN developers. Demand the right to bang dudes on your Switch. I mean, not literally on your Switch, because that would probably break your Switch. And those analog sticks, well, they can go anywhere, really. Moving on to Galge, and on the first glance, it looks fairly good. Out of 133 Japanese Galge, 42 have received an English release, which is more or less 32% of them. But it is when you look at their lengths that the true situation kind of paints a different picture. Out of those 42 translated games, only 14 of them are medium to long in their length, and that is when counting them individually. In other words, the Grisaya trilogy is being counted as three separate games. To put it into perspective, the last lengthy Galge VN released with an English translation was Alcana almost two years ago. Short Galge are definitely the king when it comes to translation. Because as a bloke myself, I can attest to the fact that we, we men, don't need to take that long to, you know, be satisfied? We don't have much stamina. Thankfully, what we do have are really high quality ones, and it will take a while for anyone to fully complete massive games such as Clanad, Little Busters, or the aforementioned Grisaya trilogy. But if you compare it to what's going on in Japan and Entergram's consistent release schedule, it is a little bit of a disappointing situation. And just as I was putting the final touches to this video on, Mirin messaged me and said, Quick, Jordan, add this update in, because Senren Banker will be coming to the Switch, which is a fairly big Galge. There is hope for Galge fans out there. Next up, Otomige, which is undoubtedly the king of Japanese visual novels on the Switch. Those Japanese can't get enough husbandos. There's a total of 142 of them on the Switch, out of which 58 have received an English release. That converts to a 40% translation rate. Also worth noting that out of those 58, there's a total of 34 games whose length ranges from medium to long. We should definitely thank the efforts of Idea Factory, Axis Games, and D3 Publisher, bringing so many high-profile Otomige to the West. Now, just to be completely fair, there are a couple of lesser-known publishers that have released a lot of Otome VNs. This is something that's certainly boosting that statistic up, which might make these numbers slightly misleading. Those two publishers are Voltage and Opera House, and between the two of them, they have published around 20 Otomi VNs, which is more than a third of the total Otomi VNs on the Switch released in the West. All of their games seem to be rather obscure, and since not that many VNDB users have scored them, it's hard to tell whether they are decent or not. But at the very least, it seems like Voltage's titles are on average somewhat better received. But nevertheless, it's undeniable the towering presence of Otomi games on the Switch, which is understandable since it is the more profitable subgenre out of all. If you take a look at the weekly video game sales data published by Famitsu, every time Japan gets a new Otomi release, it pretty much always charts. Whereas Galge, unless we're talking about a VN released by Ki or someone else with a similar pedigree, you will hardly see them even reaching the last place. And finally, let's take a look at those Western developed visual novels or Olivian. I don't know how to do that. Unless we miss them, there is a total of 106, all of them with English, or at least that's what one would think. Surprisingly enough, there's a couple of Russian-only VNs on the Switch, or at least that's what VNDB says. I couldn't actually find them on the Switch itself. Maybe they're like exclusive to the Russian eShop, if that still exists. I don't know. Maybe we're missing out on some masterpieces. So, with all of this considered, how is the Switch holding up as a VN machine? Overall, 
fairly well, but your mileage may vary depending on your preference and attachment to the genre as a whole. If you're new to VNs or play the occasional one in between other games from other genres, then the Switch does an admirable job at presenting a robust selection of games with a considerably active release schedule. I also believe that for newcomers to the genre, not only does it have just a little bit of everything, but what it does offer is some of the higher regarded titles within those subgenres. Admittedly, there are still some console ports that remain exclusive to the Vita, but it might be just a matter of time before those join the Switch's catalogue as well. Come on Axis, certain women are thirsting, I can hear them. However, if you want to use the Switch as a visual novel machine and nothing more, then you might find yourself out of games to play depending on where your tastes align. For all Otome Gear fans, the Switch is without a doubt a must-have console. Not only does it have a wide selection of high quality titles, but also plenty of which aren't available anywhere else. And if you throw in the occasional plot focus VN, you will be busy for a long ass time. On the other hand, Galge fans are left with a surprisingly limited lineup. Most of the games available, while really good, are either quite old or of really short length. And while those plot focus games could fill the hole between releases, if your main interests are romantic comedies aimed at a male audience, then you might be better off sticking with your PC. And of course, for all the massive pervs out there, all the hate scenes in the Switch versions are either censored or just cut out completely. The Switch lacks the wealth of depraved, deviant bait that a desktop has to offer. But on the other hand, the FBI might find it more difficult to keep tabs on your Switch than your PC. Safety first. Regardless, I think it's fair to say that the success of the Switch has brought a new audience to the niche genre. In fact, if you check websites such as How Long To Beat, where one can see on which platform games are most played on, you will see that the majority of Switch visual novels are more often voted for rather than the Sony counterparts. That gap becomes more noticeable in those VNs that received a physical edition, which just goes to show how physical media is still really important, especially for those less popular genres. Of course, there are exceptions to the rule, but now that Sony has long abandoned the handheld market, it wouldn't surprise me if this gap kept increasing as time goes on. Alas, let's not end this video with a negative note and celebrate this new home to visual novels that the Switch has created. To give a little anecdotal tidbit, some of you might already know that on Switch Watch, we've put together a couple of videos listing great VNs on the Switch. If you were to add up all the views of those videos together, it would be over 100,000 people watching, which would have been unheard of years ago. I mean, those views earned me like a £2.50. Could almost buy a sandwich with that. And that's going to do it for this video. I hope you found it enjoyable and informative, maybe a little bit humorous. Uh, so how do you feel about the current state of the Switch as a visual novel console? Are you satisfied with what it's offering? Let us know in the comments. If there's any terminology you struggle with, then I highly recommend you check out our informative video educating you on the matter. Plus some other Switch VN recommendations. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks to Miguel Marion for writing it. See you on the next one.